watching this free video tutorial from mographplus.com. If you are interested in learning Arnold 5 for Cinema 40 fundamentally, please make sure to check out our ultimate introduction to Arnold 5 for Cinema 40 course, which is a massive 10 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Arnold 4 Cinema 40 thoroughly. Hey guys, welcome back to mographplus.com. It's Khezri here with you and in this tutorial we're gonna be making this dragon shader or basically this kind of jade like shaders and um, the standard surface shader in Arnold 5 in the transmission section has some uh, pretty amazing parameters like the depth, uh, the scatter and the scatter anisotropy that can be used to create uh, amazing stuff and amazing shaders like this. Now we have already discussed those parameters in uh, quite a lot of details in our ultimate introduction to Arnold 5 for Cinema 40 course. So I'm not going to go over those uh, parameters and explain them. I'm just going to be, you know, kind of try to uh, create something nice like this using those parameters. And it's not like uh, one of our previous shading tutorials for Arnold for Cinema 40 in which we uh, use tons of nodes trying to kind of add more variations and more details to the specular roughness and the uh, specular weight or transmission weight or roughness. I'm just going to be strictly using the standard surface shader itself to create, uh, you know, fascinating and complex looks like this. And more precisely, the transmission section of the standard surface shader will be used more. So let's uh, try to create something like this. Now, what we have here, as you can see, the thicker parts are basically having more uh, subsurface scattering properties and the thinner parts like here having a bit more uh, refractive qualities. And that's what we're going to be trying to achieve in this tutorial. So let's get started. I'm going to just take a look at the scene that we have currently. So. Uh, we're going to be using this scene and you can download the project files uh, from the link that is available down below in the description. You can download the project files and create your own shaders if you want to. Uh, the model here is from 3dscans.com that you can uh, go there and download it if you wanted to as well. Now, let's get started before uh, doing anything uh, with the lighting and the way I have my lighting set up for this scene. Now make sure uh, the active camera in the IPR is your active camera as well here so uh, we can lock it in and take a look at the scene that we have so let me just get out of the camera for now and if I this is the lights that we have we have this main light which is coming from this back side we have this back light which is coming from here this front light and this background light if I go to my lights manager here we can actually take a closer look at those lights so here is our main light if i solo it you can see this is the light as you can see it's coming from the back side because we're gonna be trying to see that scattering properties that's why the main light the key light uh, is coming from this side this way we can actually see those scattering properties much better okay so that's our main light uh, then we have this backlight just uh, to enhance that scattering effect a bit more from this side as well. Uh, then I have this front light that's coming from this side, which is this big light here. And just uh, to uh, make those very dark areas a bit brighter. Okay. And we have also this background light, if I just solo it, just to add a bit more lighting to the backdrop that we have here. Okay. So that's the lighting. Perfect. And for this backdrop, if I open up the standard surface shader that is currently being applied to the backdrop, you can see it's a very simple standard surface shader with this shade of blue and um, the exact RGB values are here and the weight of 0.1. So we get this kind of nice backdrop as well. Now let's me create a new standard surface shader and assign it to this dragon model that we have here and we can probably actually get back to the camera here as well now let me open up the standard surface shader we probably can just double click instead of middle clicking so we can use our material editor now base color can be uh, base weight can be set to zero um, 
specular weights. I'm gonna try to something like 0.5 and the roughness, it really depends on the look that you want. And as we know, the roughness here also controls the transmission roughness. So make sure you set it to a value that you want. Now, let's start by increasing our transmission weight. Okay, something close to one. As we know in Arnold, uh, we need to actually, when we're using the transmission weight, we need to make sure opaque is disabled. If you are using Arnold for 3ds Max, uh, this opaque option is disabled by default, so you don't need to actually check anything up. Okay, now we have the transmission color. So if I just use a specific color here, just to see how it affects the dragon model that we have. The transmission color basically controls the color of the light when it passes through a transmissive shader. And uh, this color basically filters the refraction according to the distance traveled by the uh, refracted ray. The longer light travels inside a mesh, the more uh, it is affected by the transmission color. Therefore, for example, uh, blue glass gets a deeper blue as rays travel through the thicker parts and naturally colored glass has this different shade of color based on its uh, their thicknesses thinner parts will be tinted lighter and thicker parts will have darker shades of that particular color now we can obviously change the transmission color to whatever we want but here we have this important parameter, which is depth. And depth basically controls the depth into the volume at which the transmission color is realized. Increasing this value, let's say to something like five, or let's say 10 here, or we can probably some, try something like even 20. So increasing this volume makes the volume thinner, which means less absorption and scattering. Uh, and this value is a scale factor so that you can set a transmission color and then tweak the depth to be appropriate for the size of your object and control how the transmission color affect the thick and thin parts of your object. So as you can see, if I go to something like 200, now that color is kind of less visible, the, it's less contrasty, the thinner and the thicker parts generally have the same shade of blue, even though it's just a very light blue at this point when you increase the depth value that much, probably maybe something like 50. Uh, now, in this case, I'm gonna be using this color for the transmission color, and I'm gonna set the depth to about three centimeters. Now, um, the next parameter that we have here is the scatter and the scatter and isotropy. Scatter basically allows you to simulate subsurface scattering for refractive objects and can be used to create shaders for high viscous liquids like honey, caramel, chocolate, uh, or surfaces like ice. So if we use another color, you know, other than black, let's say this kind of whitish color here, you can immediately see the beautiful subsurface scattering that's happening based on the shape of the geometry. Now, if you try to kind of have a nice balanced color with your transmission color, you can kind of achieve that look that we saw, that jade look that we saw before. So uh, we have this bluish color for our transmission color. So if I just go ahead and use uh, this orangish color for the uh, depth, uh, we start to kind of get that nice contrasty look. You can see this thicker parts are kind of more, uh, the subsurface scattering effect is more obvious Then we see this thinner parts are a bit more refractive. And if we kind of decrease the roughness uh, specular section, you can actually see that effect a bit better, but I think it's obvious enough. Now, the next parameter that can be used to really control and enhance the look is this scatter and isotropy, which is the directional bias or an isotropy of the scattering. Uh, the default value of zero right here gives the isotropic scattering, so that light is scattered evenly in all directions. And positive values bias the scattering effect forwards in the direction of the light, while negative values 
bias the scattering backwards towards the light you can see we just don't get that contrast that we're after i mean it can be nice for a specific look but i really like that contrasty look so i'm probably gonna increase my scatter and i start to to something like 0.7 Okay, now we start to get this uh, beautiful look. Um, let's me just come down here. We can actually involve the subsurface effect itself. Uh, it's gonna be a bit more expensive if you wanted to, and uh, but I think it can be used to enhance the look a bit. So if I just zero out my transmission weight for now and start increasing the subsurface weight to something like maybe 0.5, and if I just turn off uniform scaling and work on my radius values for red, uh, green, and blue, probably I don't want the red rays to scatter that much into geometry, so probably something like one centimeters. So you can see now we can see the red colors on the thinner parts. And let's decrease the radius for green and blue for about four centimeters. Obviously, if I want to be a bit more bluish, I can increase the blue radius or a bit more greenish. I can increase the green radius, but in this case, I'm going to set them to about four. And now if we start increasing our transmission weight, obviously the effect of subsurface scattering would be less visible, but it just adds that little detail, that little coloration to the edges that can enhance the effect. So as you can see, we get this very beautiful and complex shader by just adjusting a few parameters in the transmission section, depth, scatter, scatter, and isotropy, and the transmission color. Obviously, if we wanna kinda enhance the look a bit, we can probably increase the uh, specular weight if we wanted to. It really depends on uh, the particular look that you're after. But in this case, let me just set it to about 0.5, okay? Now, if we want to change the uh, basically color and the look, we just need to adjust the transmission color and the transmission scatter color parameters here. So if I just uh, stop this here, and let's name this uh, shader something like green jade. Let me duplicate this. Let's name this, I don't know, red jade pink jade do we even have those i don't know we don't care here so let me just assign this shader i'm gonna run the ipr again and open up these let me just get back to transmission and the subsurface section here so you can obviously change this color whatever color we want and you would see a huge change immediately right as you can see very nice so maybe we can use bluish color here probably less saturated so you get some nice beautiful looks simply by adjusting these two colors but in this case let's use this one for the transmission color and use this color for the scatter color and we can obviously adjust the anisotropy to get that particular look that we are after you can maybe increase it closer to one to just get that extra contrastier look if we wanted to but in this case let me just stay about point, uh, 0.7 and we can obviously adjust the depth parameter you can see if we wanna see less of that scattering attributes we can increase the depth and as you can see now we have a, a more refractive looking shader in front of us let me just set that to 3 again and probably in this case, just to kind of complement the colors that we have, I'm gonna probably decrease the, just see, decrease the uh, subsurface scattering weight. So in this case, I probably want the 
red color to be more visible in the thicker parts and green and blue more on the edges okay and if we increase the transmission weight again we can obviously just make sure it's not one because if the transmission weight is set to one you can see the subsurface section will be grayed out and won't affect the shader at all so i'm gonna just decrease this to about 0.93 so the subsurface section would be slightly effective just add a bit more detail there okay folks so uh, here's um, this render as well as you can see it's quite nice quite fascinating and complex now imagine if you can actually spend a bit more time and add a bit more detail to the uh, specular and transmission roughness and uh, i think or uh, use a texture for the transmission color or the scatter color it would add a lot more complexity to the uh, shader but in general as you can see uh, a lot of stuff can be done with the standard surface shader okay now for the final render um, just obviously make sure your lights having enough samples probably something like three would be enough which is all uh, the lights here are at three and for the render settings I'm probably going to increase my camera samples to about five diffuse samples we don't need that much I'm gonna increase my probably specular and transmission samples to about three as well we have subsurface scattering but it's not that dominant it's barely visible so we don't need to actually go crazy for the subsurface scattering effect as well so i'm gonna uh, if the subsurface scattering is a bit more dominant obviously you need to increase the subsurface scattering sampling a bit higher probably to five six or even eight to get a more clear subsurface scattering effect but in this case because the subsurface scattering isn't affecting the overall render that much and it's barely visible so probably something like three would be enough and i'm not going to change my ray depth settings and you can obviously use the uh, resolution that you are looking for in this case probably something like 1080p would be nice so now you are ready for your final render hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial now uh, we explain these parameters very quickly in this tutorial uh, but if you want to actually understand more about the transmission section or the subsurface scattering section of the standard surface shader make sure to check out our ultimate introduction to arnold 5 for cinema 4d course at our website mographplus.com we go over every single parameter with tons of examples at that tutorial but this one was just a fun tutorial to create some amazing and complex looking shaders so thank you for watching and i will see you in the next tutorial thanks for watching this free video tutorial from mographplus.com if you are interested in learning arnold 5 for cinema 4d fundamentally please make sure to check out our ultimate introduction to arnold 5 for cinema 4d course which is a massive 10 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of arnold 4 cinema 4d thoroughly